Today I'm going to show you how to get your lazy spa ready for its first use and your first spa using this clear water spa starter kit. Just quickly though, let me answer the question, why add chemicals to a hot tub? Very simply, the bottom line is that it helps to keep the water clean and clear and free of bacteria. Dirty water is unpleasant to spa in and bacteria can be extremely unhealthy, deadly even. I'm using clear water partly because Lazy Spa recommend it, but also because my local retail outlet stocks Lazy Spa and stocks clear water and another make, which I can't remember the name of. So, and, and the clear water was slightly cheaper. Whatever starter kit you get, it'll come with instructions. Do follow the instructions that come with the kit. This is instructions for the clear water. The first chemical to put in is the stabilized chlorine granules. With a brand new spa, you need to give the spa an initial shock treatment which is a double dose. For 1200 litres, like this has got, that's five teaspoons. That's 25 grams. Every time you refill it after this, 12 and a half grams. This comes in granular form and you dispense it by the teaspoonful, a teaspoon being five grams. However, don't just take 25 grams, five teaspoons full, and just chuck the granules in the spa because the granules get sucked around the pump, they can damage it. Take a litre jug of the 40 degree water out of your spa which I know you can't see, but I've got on a little table just here. Wouldn't you know, I haven't got a table just tall enough for you to see beyond the tub. A black mark against clear water here. This is a standard teaspoon, five millilitres. It only just, and I do mean only just, fits through the top. Rifle through your teaspoon drawer and pick a teaspoon that actually fits through. We've got some that don't. A heaped spoonful is your five grams. Five of those into your jug of water and then put the lid on. All of these chemicals are hazardous, so always keep the lids on. Stir up your warm water to dissolve the granules. The water will go in a funny milky white color, but don't worry about that. That's only because you've got a highly concentrated amount of chlorine in here. Tip it in, give your jug a rinse out. Make sure that your circulation pump is going so that the chlorine gets distributed evenly amongst all the water. Put your lid back on and come back to it in two hours. It's important to put the lid on for these two hours, not just because it keeps the heat in the water, taking the load off your heater, but also if it's a sunny day, which as I'm sure you can see, it's not here, then sunlight breaks down the chlorine. That's one of the reasons why you need to regularly redose, because as you use it and the water is exposed to sunlight, it breaks down the chlorine. Now that two hours have passed, we need to test the pH levels. Find your container of test dippers, Take one test, dip it in the water, straight back out. Put the lid back on the container so as not to contaminate any of the other tests and use the chart on the side. I'm somewhere between five and 10 for my free chlorine, which is about correct. Five is the level to be maintained at. The initial dose would have pushed it up to 10 initially. And on pH, we want to be maintaining around 7.4. Mm. Compare the colors. That can, actually be, that can actually be quite difficult because how good your eyesight is can uh, affect that. It's a shame they can't come up with a dipper that actually gives you a number. Comparing the colour chart with my uh, dipstick, who were misses, I think I'm getting results that are slightly low, about 6.8. We'll come back to that in a moment. And the total alkalinity, can't say it now, and the total alkalinity is also slightly low but that should be taken care of by raising the pH. Depending on the result you get, depends on what you add next. pH plus and a tub of pH minus. Now I was reading a little low, I need to raise the pH, which means I need some pH plus. The dosage rate for pH plus is given as 10 grams per thousand liters, but the instructions don't actually tell you how much that raises the pH by. What it does say is add that much, come back four hours later and retest. Also, you need your tub again because these granules need pre-dissolving. 10 grams. Again, another black mark against clear water. Can only just get a spoon in there. Stir for a few moments and add to the spa. Again, I'm going to give my air jets a quick blast to mix it around well. But because I'm an impatient sort, I'm retesting after two hours instead of four and that 10 grams 
raised my pH to between 7.2 and 7.6, nearer 7.6, so which is well inside the okay range. And the total out and the total alkalinity is now in the region of 80, which is also in the okay range. So I'm happy with that. I will test it again in another couple of hours. We should be able to use the tub this evening when my wife gets home from work. Now the free chlorine level is given in ppm on this scale and 5 ppm is about right. That's where you should maintain it at, 4 or 5. You should test the pool every day. Now to raise the ppm of the chlorine by 1 ppm in a 1000 litre tub requires 2 grams of chlorine, which is half a spoonful. So each day you test it, see how low or high you are, and if you're low, add two grams of chlorine for every ppm low you are. Prorate that for a smaller or larger tub. And, a, and after each daily test, add a little pH plus or a pH minus, depending on what your result is. Based on my result I got just then, I would, I would suggest going easy with the pH plus and minus. A relatively small amount of pH plus raised my pH by quite a bit. Hopefully over time I'll get more practiced at it and maybe I'll do another video with some of the nuances. But hopefully this video has told you what a newbie needs to know. And the next video in this series, in a few weeks time when I've had a bit of practice and tried out two or three different uh, strategies, I'll do a video on how to keep the running costs to a minimum, particularly the electricity costs. And as soon as that video is available, it'll be up here in the corner of the screen for you to click on and go straight to. But of course, if you subscribe to the channel, hopefully you'll get the notification. See you next time.